Hi everybody, I hope that you're all doing really well. Well, better late than never, I am now getting finally to my 27th birthday slash 2000 subscribers Q&A video that I had been promising. I was really, really grateful to get all of your questions and there's quite a few of them. So I'm not gonna ramble on too, too much. This is just going to be a chance to get to know me through some of the lovely questions that people have submitted. So let's just get right in there because I know that I can talk for England. The first lot of questions comes from the lovely Rosie Cockshut who says, congratulations from one 27 year old to another, just the idea of a 30 books I want to read before 30 List or anything similar fill you with excitement, terror, or some other emotion. And honestly, the main emotion that I get when I see things like 30 before 30 lists, when it comes to books at least, is like, <laughs> that's unlikely. I am notoriously really, really bad with a TBR, so I don't feel like a TBR that is set before any certain time period is gonna work for me. I've been quite tempted to do like my life's TBR, so certain books where I know that eventually I want to read it, but it's not an immediate priority. That's interesting to me because I feel like, you know, hopefully, knock on wood, knock, 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 I have a pretty good chance of having a long time, oh God, now I've said that, I'm gonna jinx myself, to read those books. But any sort of set required reading with a clear deadline, I'm no good at that, especially if there's no incentive. If it's not a classroom requirement, it's not a book club requirement, I'm probably not gonna read it. I will probably push it off in favour of other books that I actually really want to read. That being said, that's not to say that I don't like bucket lists or 30 before 30 lists that are not to do with books. I do have one of those for myself. Don't know if I'm going to meet all of those prompts, but I'm not against it, just not really with books. Danelle Lamond asked, my question is, what would be your dream musical theatre role to perform and why? I mean, my longest dream role has been Glinda in Wicked, something that is never going to happen. And it's probably not even going to happen when it comes to Amdram, because there is no way that any amateur production societies would get the rights to that. Wicked is just constantly on the no list. Similarly, I would love to play Fontaine in Les Mis or Repony. I also like not opposed to Cosette, but I don't think I could sing her quite as well. But Les Mis is never gonna be available to perform in the UK. In terms of roles that I would love to play that I could potentially have the chance to do, I would love to be Maria in The Sound of Music. I don't know if you can get the rights for it, but Cinderella in the Rogers and Hammerstein Cinderella and Anya from Anastasia. I know you only asked for one, but I gave you five. Emma from Overstuff Shelf asks me a barrage of questions that are kind of this or that. First off, cats or dogs? I'm gonna break the rule straight away and say, both, I love both. I think in terms of my personality, I am more of a dog person, but I have more experience with cats. Olive oil or butter? And I presume this means to cook with, in which case olive oil, I've never cooked with butter before. Audrey or Catherine Hepburn? I mean, I've got nothing against Catherine Hepburn, but... I think you know what my answer is. Rain or shine? Generally shine, though I do like me a good thunderstorm. And hardbacks or paperbacks? I mean, hardbacks can be really, really beautiful, but in terms of logistics, I much prefer a paperback. Aoife over at Pretty Purple Polka Dots asks me quite a few questions. What are five books you hope your niece will read throughout her life? I think now that I've read Anne of Green Gables, that is definitely one that I want her to read. This book of just maintaining your positivity and your joy and your uniqueness. She's going to be going to school this year and I'm really, really hoping that it doesn't like dampen her spirit, her creativity. I, I really, really hope she has a good experience. On her general like life TBR, I would love her to read Pride and Prejudice so that I could gush about it with her. I'll be forcing a lot of Roald Dahl and Jacqueline Wilson on her just so that we can have similar like child book talking points to get to. And definitely a good helping of Lauren Child as well. Three characters you'd like to do Come Dine With Me With. And that was really making me think like, what, what books have I read where there is a really fantastic show chef. I think probably, oh, I just read This One's Guy Day and one of the main characters in that is able to season things just with his hands. I think he'd be a fantastic person to do Come Down With Me with. I think Mrs. Weasley, of course, would be a fantastic Come Down With Me host. And then in March, I had just finished reading The Language of Food by Annabelle Abbs. Now, this isn't a fictional character, but it's a fictionalized version of Eliza Acton. I think the combo pair of Eliza and Anne would be fantastic. And I'd be really interested to see if anybody else could think of fictional chefs because it just was not coming to me. Shannon over at 155 books says, if you could give your younger self one piece of sage advice, what would it be? I think just generally get organized, make more of an effort to have your life together. I think especially one of the major things that really tripped me up when I was at uni, mainly during my BA year, in fact, no, entirely during my BA years, was my complete lack of organization. And I just thought, I'll remember things. And I never remember things. If left to my own devices, I'm constantly forgetting things, constantly losing things. I need to have like a very, very solid organizational system in order to do anything. So 
do that, do that Charlotte, because I found my masters so, so much easier once I'd instituted like my to-do list and my Google calendar. It was all flowing very seamlessly and I wish I'd instituted it a lot sooner. Faye L says, do you have a favorite bookmark? And here are some that I prepared earlier. You may have wanted one, but I've got multiple. First off, I have to give a massive shout out to one of my friends, Katie, who for Christmas got me this fantastic Six Wives of Henry VIII bookmark. Also, I am such a big fan of my independent bookshop back in Halifax called Book Corners and I have both of their different iterations of their bookmarks. This was the very first one that they created and now uh, this is the latest one on the one that they give out now. Book Corner is in the Peace Hall, the historic Peace Hall in Halifax, so this bookmark really represents that. And then I've also had some nice bookmarks that I've gotten over at Book Depository. I've got this lovely one with pumpkins, and then this one which is based on a quote from Goodnight Mr Tom, which is, I'd rather be happy and odd than miserable and ordinary. I don't typically go around like buying bookmarks myself, I just tend to collect them as I get them, but yeah, I really like these. Ben over at Doom Antidote says, if you were to write your own mad Miller-esque myth retelling, what character or story would you write about? Oh, why did I not think about this sooner? I feel like I did have my answer for this when I first read it and now I've completely forgotten. I mean, my favourite character is Odysseus, so maybe an Odyssey retelling? I feel like there are a dime a dozen though. <laughs> maybe I'd like an Ariadne retelling that I actually enjoy this time. Edna says, what's your favourite season? Uh, my favourite season is definitely autumn. I am a spring baby and I do really like spring. Summer is way too hot for me and winter, once we get past Christmas and the new year, I'm like, okay, what's the point of this? Can we just speed up and get ourselves to spring, please? <laughs> Much too cold. But autumn for me has all of the anticipation of Christmas. Christmas is my favourite time of the year and I love getting to see the leaves changing colours. I like seeing all the lights up in shops, all the lovely warm clothes and boots and coats and hats and scarves that are all in shops. I love it so much. What's your favourite food? Oh, this is a subject of intense debate. I would probably maybe say some sort of pasta dish, but actually if I'm going like any food, probably like either cake or ice cream. Or cake and ice cream. Mm, some sort of sponge put in with custard or ice cream. Mm, yeah. And finally, she asks, do you like ebooks? I don't tend to use ebooks all that often. I don't have a Kindle, I don't have an iPad. So if I were to use ebooks, it would mainly be on my phone. I am definitely somebody who wants to always have a physical copy of a book. But in terms of practicality, I do see why ebooks are very, very useful. I just haven't quite hopped on board on that yet. Just, you know, how much money it costs to buy a Kindle or an iPad. Adeline B says, if you could rewrite the ending to any book, what book would it be and why? As much as I love it, probably the book thief, so that the bad things that happen do not happen but then maybe it wouldn't be quite so much of a gut punch if the bad things didn't happen but oh it gets me every time. I recently talked about how much I didn't like the ending to the intoxicating Mr Lavelle. I would have completely changed the ending and probably the whole theme of that book. All I want is to dip into that book and tell Benjamin that Mr Lavelle is toxic and for him to leave him and also leave his toxic family. Get rid of all the toxic people in your life Benjamin. Live your best life. Find a nice young man who really does appreciate you and doesn't take you for granted and treat you like you're an idiot. Like please, you can do so much better. If you could read any book for the first time again, what book would you pick? Pick. See, I have a hard time with this because I, I I don't like it when I'm first dipping into a book. I always have such a struggle. I think I did actually have this question last time and I think my answer to that had been Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince because I'd not had a great experience the first time reading that. So I guess that still holds true. I'd be very interested to see what my opinion to that would have been had I picked it up for the first time under like more favourable circumstances. Jenny over at Bookish Shenanigans asked, would you rather go to the Mad Hatter's party or have a picnic on the riverbank a la Wind in the Willows? And this is the moment where I confess that I have not read The Wind in the Willows, but also I confess that I'm not actually the biggest fan of Alice in Wonderland. I feel like if I were at the Mad Hatter's tea party, I would just get so annoyed by the nonsense of it all. So even though I haven't read Wind in the Willows, I would probably go for their picnic on the riverside. Even though for both of them, like outdoor dining, not a fan, not a fan at all. And then she poses a very hard question, which is to rank the Queen songs from six. So I'm presuming that we are just going for the main six songs rather than the group songs. And that's a really, really, really hard one. I like them all for different reasons. Oh. And also there are some songs that I love to listen to and then some songs that I love to sing. So that's really hard. Ah. Ah. Okay, I'm gonna do this both ways. I'm gonna do my favourite ones to sing and then I'm gonna do my favourite ones to listen to. So probably my least favourite one to try and sing is Get Down. It's very much an alto song, which sometimes is there for me. 
and other times is not. Then fifth place in terms of ones that I like to sing is All You Wanna Do for completely the opposite reasons in that I can sing most of All You Wanna Do aside from the very end when we get some of the big high belty notes. I am a soprano who does not belt very much but I don't think anybody wants the ending to that song in a head voice, it's not good. Then I would probably say No Way. Really love that song but I don't find it as interesting to sing. Then I would say maybe I Don't Need Your Love. I love singing that song. Once again there is a big belty note right at the end. I can sing the entire song and then the last note is kind of a 50-50 hit or miss. But it is a long song. It is a very long song to sing. Then I would go Don't Lose Your Head and then I would go Heart of Stone because I can sing that song and I can sing the high bit in a head voice and I don't think that that sounds terrible in a head voice. But then in terms of which one I like to listen to I would actually say I love to sing Heart of Stone but I probably like to listen to it the least. Then probably fifth place in terms of listening to is No Way. Then I Don't Need Your Love. Then Get Down. Oh no, no. Then All You Want to Do then get down, then don't lose your head. Even though I do have issues with one of the lines in Don't Get Your Head. Politics not my thing. Really, Anne Boleyn? Really? It's just got a very good beat. I really like it. <laughs> and then finally, I'm going to end off with questions from my lovely friend Rachel, who sent me a bunch of questions. <laughs> a book everyone loves, but you will never read. I mean, I'm never going to read Call Me By Your Name. Like, no, I have no interest. <laughs> Similarly, I am never going to read Where the Crawdad Sings. I even owned a copy of that at one point, but no, not my thing. Best and worst tropes in novels. Okay, I've already done a video on my best tropes and I am soon going to do a my least favourite ones, but I'm going to do my least favourites, but also books that subvert that. So it's a trope that I hate, but I actually love the book. That is in the works. It will be coming, maybe not soon, but at some point. Where is one place that you would love to visit, but have never been to before? And right now, I am really, really desperate to do a trip around Italy. I feel like a lot of people I know are going to Italy and I have been, I've been to Rome and Sorrento. I've been to Pompeii but I really want to go to Florence, I want to go to Venice, and really what I want to do is just like have a few days in lots of different Italian cities. I would love 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 to do that, but I desperately need someone to go with me because I'm way too much of a baby to do a solo trip like that. Best place for a hot chocolate in Oxford, York or Huddersfield? Okay, Huddersfield, you're, you're not getting a white hot chocolate that I love. Oxford, I really love Society Cafe for a white hot chocolate. I also really really love Coffee Smiths. I haven't had hot chocolate from there, but their tea and cakes are beautiful. And if you've got any more Oxford cafe recommendations, do let me know. If they have good cakes, you are onto a winner. And I can't believe that all of my favourite cafe recommendations from York have just flown out of my head. A genie gives you three wishes. What do you choose? Would you free him? I don't know if this is just would I free him or what would I choose to wish for? I honestly don't know what I would do for my first two wishes, but I would hope that I am a good enough person to free him. I mean, Aladdin is my favourite Disney film. And as you see, the genie, as played by Robin Williams, is my favourite Disney character. So I would hope that I am a good enough person and loyal enough to the genie to let him go free. Go free! Which Disney princess would you vote out of the princess club? No. <laughs> Okay, okay. Um, I, I, I'm nervous about this because of the person who asked me this, because I know that she is not going to like the answer that I give. Rachel is not. Uh, because probably the, the princess that I would knock out is Merida from Brave. I'm so sorry, Rachel. I'm not particularly attached to Brave. And I say this as somebody who was actually dressed up as Merida. I'm gonna pop the photo here. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm not as... I, Brave is fine, but I don't think the script is as tight as it could be and I think it really really suffered from a lot of production problems. I believe the original script writer ended up getting kicked off of the production and it was like her babies and they changed a lot of things and you can really tell. I feel like we were promised this great epic story and we just didn't get it. It's just mum gets turned into a bear. Woo. And I'm sorry, and I'm sorry, it's not a case of me not liking Merida, it's more like I like all of the other princesses so much more. Would you ever try writing for yourself non-fiction or fiction? Um, probably if I did ever write a book it would be fiction. I don't trust that I am enough of an authority on anything to do a non-fiction book, but I actually haven't written for myself for a very very long time. I just feel like if I were to be an author then I would need to have a lot more ideas more frequently than I currently do. I have a couple of things in my head of like books I would like to see but I don't know if I'm the person to write them. Dream six cast, uh, me in all six roles. Which book would you start with if you were freezing and needed to kindle a fire? Oh a controversial question. Uh, I have done a video that is about my one star books, my least favourite books I've ever read. I think top of the pile to burn would be This Is What We Do by Tom Hansen. Hated 
hated that book, The Road by Cormac McCarthy. That's going straight on that pile. Prettiest book on your shelf. Okay, I am going working from the books that I've currently read, which are all up here. There is a limited amount of them because I'm not in my home of all of my lovely bookshelves. So give me a second. It is probably a toss up between Leah Wife by J.R. Thorpe and The Language of Food by Annabelle Abbs. I'm kind of leaning towards The Language of Food because it has aspects which are very much me, white with blue flowers, that is me in a nutshell. I basically ended up picking this book up because of the fact that it was blue with flowers on them. Has the cooking part, has the two lead characters. I love this so much. And it has the bonus of actually being a fantastic book, which I can't say for all of my prettiest books. Mixed media, e.g. letters, etc., or straight prose novels. I feel like if I constantly only read mixed media books, then I would get very burnt out on them. But I do love a letter. I like an interview. I especially love images, but it would have to be alongside just straight prose. It can't only be that because I feel like that would get boring fast. Best historical fiction book you've read, not Wolf Hall. Rachel, why are you so mean to me? <laughs> Luckily for you, I have a handy dandy list of all of the historical fiction books I've read. Okay, ones that I love that are not Wolf Hall. <sighs> Obviously, The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, but less so as a historical fiction novel, just generally as a book. Love and Fury by Samantha Silva, I really love. The Book Thief by Marcus Suzak, obviously. The Language of Food, The Other Bennett Sister. There, there are a few. A great question that Rachel also asks is, would you have died of consumption in the before times? I know I would have. Basically the idea behind this question being if you were transported back hundreds of years would you have survived long or would some sort of mysterious ailment probably have taken you? I mean obviously like who knows where I would be if I didn't have paracetamol, if I didn't have access to modern medicine, but like I've never broken a bone so far once again. <laughs> knock on wood. I've never had like a major major health scare. I was born prematurely but I got through that okay. My main thing that I have is hay fever. I am not very good in the summer months so probably that might have gotten me but I'm very very lucky to not have had like chronic illnesses or anything like that. I'm pretty grumpy when I'm an ill person but I'm not completely debilitated <laughs> most of the time and like I say I've never caught anything that has been like life-threatening. Oh wood, it stays that way. So maybe I think I've got a fairly good immune system. I, d I don't know. Um, who knows? But I think maybe I would have a good shot of living a while. <laughs> Please universe do not time travel me back to put me to the test. And then finally Rachel hits me with a barrage of Anne of Green Gables related questions which is very fitting since she is the main person that I read Anne of Green Gables for. Is Roy Gardner ever truly an option? No, of course not. Don't be silly. Gilbert five ever. Would you have hit Gilbert with a slate? Um, probably not, but I, I think he deserved to know that calling Anne carrots was not a good thing to do. <laughs> I have recently watched a compilation of all of the different clips from all of the different adaptations of Anne of Green Gables where Anne hits him with her slate and it's just so funny. <laughs> just the way that every actor playing Gilbert goes from haha I'm gonna make fun of this girl to oh my god I'm in love now she's hit me over the head. It's just beautiful to watch. Though I think I do agree with general consensus that Anne with an E has the best version of that scene. I think it's just Gilbert's reaction to it it's so good. And then finally which Anne of Green Gables character are you? And I'm not entirely sure. I don't think I am like as wild and adventurous as Anne is but I know Diana describes herself as being like pretty unimaginative which is sad because I really like Diana as a character. I think maybe I'm a healthy mix of the two but Rachel do let me know who you think I am. It just makes me very very sad that after a couple of books Diana is kind of in the background not really interacting with the main plot just off you know getting married and having the children and not going to university and not in any of the fun anymore but no let me know who you think I would be so there we go those are all of the questions I was asked for my combined 27th birthday and 2000 subscribers Q&A also recently last week I hit 10,000 watch hours for the lifetime of my channel so thank you very very much for that and in May I'm going to be coming up on my second year anniversary off my YouTube channel so that is very very exciting much to celebrate. Do let me know your answers to any of the questions I received down below. I'd love to hear from you. I hope you have a fantastic, fantastic day and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks. Bye!